is this. Our first one is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. And the next verse starts in 24 through 30. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed seed, good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't we sow good seeds in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Our next verse is in John chapter 8, 1 through 11. Eight, one through 11. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with a woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your gifts, or leave your life of sin. Our next one is in Luke 11. Uh, Verses 24 through 26. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, Children's Church? Not this morning. Thank you, Jerry. Well, Happy New Year. Year. Alan called me last night from Hawaii. I think he called to rub it in a little bit. He said, we're watching the sunset by the beach and so on, and I was looking outside at the darkness and the snow. But he called basically, really, to say we're praying for you. We're going to watch the service on the Internet. 
and so on. So I thought that was pretty neat to get a phone call from Hawaii. And we also have no bulletins because Sherry had made agreement to do them and send them back to Diane. And I, what is it, Diane? She says what? Well, you probably don't think the passages that we just read are related to New Year's message, or to each other for that matter. Uh, But bear with me. How many of you are acquainted with weeds? (laughs) Anybody not? (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about it. You know, I spent a lot of my summer pulling weeds and had a lot of time to think. Some of my thoughts were... Number one, I hate pulling weeds, especially around rose bushes, and especially weeds with thorns, and especially those with deep roots. Two, as a result, I came to hate weeds. And three, I'd rather be playing Scrabble. So, what is a weed? Weed is anything growing where it doesn't belong. For instance, there are some things that we don't think of as weeds, but can be. Two that I'm aware of are corn and sunflowers. So when are corn and sunflower weeds? Because corn is usually grown for food, and sunflowers are grown for beauty and seeds. And last summer, when we were coming back home, driving across South Dakota... I saw field after field of sunflowers being grown as a crop. Unfortunately, when I was a boy growing up, they grew up in the middle of soybean field and needed to be pulled. And I walked the fields, two rows at a time, chopping, pulling, to get rid of the sunflower and other weeds that might be in there, corn and sunflower both, because if we let them grow by the time harvest came, the sunflower stalk would be as thick around as my wrist, and it would raise havoc with the machinery, because the corn or sunflower stalk would, could, would be as hard as wood besides, and it would break the sickle blades and the combine, cause many problems, many delays. In addition, sunflowers left on the cornfield could cause damage to the corn picker. And my dad was so anti-sunflower that he would stop anywhere he saw one to pull it, and he would say, if we don't pull it now, there'll be 50,000 of these next year. <laughs> well, what are some other types of weeds, and what do they do? Some weeds are obvious. They stand out. No one wants them. Thistles, cockleburs, Dandelions are some examples. Thistles are, have a pretty flower, but they are really sharp and prickly, and I'm reminded but of the thorn around Jesus' head, you know, at, at the crucifixion time. They could have well come from some form of thistle. Uh, cocklebirds are little small barbs that just cling to your clothes, and you go to pull them off, and then they stick to your fingers, and you can't get them off, so you rub them on your clothes, and then they stick there again. You just can't get rid of them. Okay, and finally, we're all familiar with dandelions. I heard of one person that really liked dandelions, but most people just as soon not have them. So, so what do they have in common? There are other weeds, too. They have a couple things in common. First of all, they, de- they detract from the desired plant. And they do this at least two ways. First, it's an appearance. Dad would see some weed in the flax or barley and go after it with a vengeance with the word. You thought you could hide from me, didn't you? Well, but the second way is probably the worst. It takes nutrients away from the desired crop. And I'm going to come back to nutrients in just a little while. So I would like to take another look at the parable of the sower in Matthew. And I see in other applications. My understanding on reading it in most applications is that they don't become Christians when they hear this because they turn away and so on. But I think it can represent Christians too. Christians can hear the word and then get detracted and not take it as seriously as they ought to. 
because they can get caught up in the cares of the world as well. And as a result, weeds can come and cause problems in the Christian's life. Now, what are some weeds in our lives that are obvious? Well, some real obvious ones would be drunkenness and murder and pornography. And the testimony of a Christian having these weeds of sin in their lives will generally have a negative effect on their non-Christian friends. However, because they're obvious, I don't really plan to get into that here. I want to get into some that are not so obvious. Grass that used to, we used to call back in Minnesota pigeon grass looks a lot like a blade of corn when it first starts sprouting. So until I'm sure, I leave it until there's no doubt. Then I can get rid of the pigeon grass and leave the corn. And when I used to first help Verla May in the garden, she wanted the garden. I didn't, but I would help out anyway. I would be frustrated in the carrot row. There's a, there's a weed that I don't think occurs any place but in carrot rows. It looks just like a carrot. And it took me a while to just be able to tell them apart. So again, unless we're sure, we need to leave it alone, and, and then we can pull them. Now, there are a lot of these not-so-obvious weeds that show up in churches. And at first glance, they appear to be respectable. And the following are some of these weeds, and I'm going to talk about a few of them. One of the weeds is the so-called deadly, is from one of the so-called deadly sins from the early church history. It's called gluttony. Uh, you didn't expect that one, did you? Probably one of the Christians' most favorite popular sins, because we all enjoy our potlucks and fellowship dinners. Jesus told us about the lot of feast we'd be looking forward to, such as the marriage lamb of the feast of the lamb. But there is a difference between a fellowship dinner and just pigging out. Maybe occasionally is okay, but if you make a habit of it, that can be a problem. So we're told to be moderate in all things. Other weeds include pride, anger, unforgiveness, arrogance, and covetousness. Now, one of my pets is covetousness. It shows up in areas of Christian service. We as Christians are guilty of making some of the spiritual gifts more important than others and uh, more prominent than others. And so a lot of people that don't have some of these particular gifts will covet them and say, I wish I could sing like so-and-so. I can't do anything in the church because I can't sing. Or I wish I could preach like Lowell. Uh, not everybody is called to be a preacher. And so we sometimes covet these prominent gifts and positions because uh, they do look more important. And we are guilty of making them appear more important. Now, and while they are important, don't get me wrong, we... We make the preacher or musician seem more important than the usher or the person who shovels the sidewalks. Now, last Sunday, I think, I saw Alan not only preached, he shoveled the sidewalks. So he was doing both. And we have those things that happen. Just remember that a theater production, a play, would not happen without the set designers or backstage people. A perfect pass in a football play would not happen without good blocking. And the final second winning basket wouldn't win the game if it weren't for the other points made prior to that last one. So everything works together. We have to be a team. Another respectable weed is gossip. Gossip is described by the game which was discussed in a book that I have someplace around my house called Games Christians Play. And this particular game is, let's all pray for Mrs. So-and-so. You fill in the name. Now, again, don't get me wrong. It's important to pray for people with problems. It's important to share problems. I once made the mistake in an adult Sunday school class in another church when I shared a past problem with the class. The Lord had forgiven it. It was gone, forgotten. But I shared it to illustrate God's grace. The next thing I knew, one of the members, the adult members of my class, had gone home and told everybody he knew about my previous problem. 
took many months for the fallout to disappear. So one important thing to consider is who we tell and how we tell a prayer concern. Also, what is shared should stay with the one or ones we share with. If the issue is serious, we should get permission to share the concern from one uh, from the one involved. Now, some people share every ache and pain they've got, and others could be at death's door and not, not a word is said. The first type is like the President of the United States. If he sneezes, it makes front page news. About a year or so ago, a famous singer, actress died. And I think it was front page news for about a month. It just lasted and lasted and lasted. Same time, some Marines were killed in action. And I think they managed to make the back page with a couple lines about them. And uh, the other type of, uh, of uh, people that don't share. Years ago, we had a dentist in this town, my dentist. His wife died. Nobody knew a thing about it, hardly. He just kept on with his practice and went about business, and people were surprised. Well, where's your wife? Well, she died. So, yeah, we, people hardly knew about it. So we can have two extremes. The point that I'm making here, that I'm wanting to make, is that it's very easy to go from being a concerned Christian to being a gossip. So why do we gossip? I think one reason is it makes us feel important. We know something about somebody that maybe somebody else doesn't. So let's continue to be concerned and let's continue to share, but let's make sure we are sharing with the right motive. Another weed that I am aware of is lack of forgiveness. It's very serious to a Christian. Because Jesus says, if we won't forgive, we're withholding God's forgiveness from us too. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're asking God to forgive us the same way that we forgive others. And if we're not forgiving others, he's not going to forgive us. And along with that, unforgiveness leads to holding grudges, which can poison our lives. It's like the weeds that we used to call the morning glory, creeping Jenny, Quack grass, and by the way, I wouldn't have a lawn if it weren't for quack grass, but that's beside the point probably. These kind of weeds sneak in and choke everything else out. They just strangle the plant. So holding a grudge is like that. And remember that holding and feeding a grudge becomes very expensive. You know, grudges grow. I heard a, we had a... Uh, radio skit one time that this guy was feeding the grudge. It was like a little pet animal, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've actually read of cases where someone maybe got a baby python and let it grow bigger and bigger, and it turned on the fellow. Or someone else got a baby tiger. It's cute, you know, raise it. But sometimes that wild instinct takes over and can come back and haunt you. And that's the same way with grudges. It can drive your friends away from you, and it robs you of the peace God wants to give you. Another area is our attitude. It's very sneaky. A few years ago, there was a pastor in this town who was into sports. He coached a little league team. And we were embarrassed at the way he yelled at the kids, belittling the way they were playing, losing his temper with them when they fumbled the ball or struck out. And I hated to admit it, but he was my pastor at the time in another church. Our tongue can be a very nasty weed. The Bible says, how can both good things and bad things come out of the same mouth? Well, unfortunately, it can. I tutored a beautiful young lady at Northwest Academy a few years ago. I still tutor up there. This young lady ruined that image, at least with me, because when I worked with her and she would speak, almost every other word was a curse word or a garbage type word. And as I was finishing my tutoring with her, she was about to graduate, I called her on it. And I says, you know, you are a very beautiful young lady, but your mouth ruins that image. If, if you could learn and to, to keep your words clean and pure, you would be beautiful all the way through. 
Now, I don't know how effective my words were because he did graduate and left. Now, as mentioned, weeds can destroy the beauty of the harvest or the flower garden. Now, I want to emphasize one thing. These weeds don't condemn us to hell. Our salvation isn't ruined. But they sure can affect our testimony. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And if there are weeds in the way, the non-believer may not see the Savior be lifted up. That doesn't mean we have to be perfect, or that we are perfect. But neither does that give us an excuse to be neglectful. If the non-believer sees we're trying to weed our garden, he or she is going to be attracted to our honesty and our testimony. After all, we are told in the Bible to strive for excellence. There's always room for improvement, right? And here's another thought. We can be weed-free and still be ineffective. Plants need water and the right nutrients. We need the living word in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit working. We need to read our Bibles, memorize it, meditate on it. We need to apply it to our lives. Regular, consistent prayer time. Now, good Christian reading and music can help us, give us the nutrients that we need. And good Christian friends are important. And they can help us find the weeds we miss. So, as we get rid of the weeds, we have to work to keep our garden weed free. Otherwise, we may end up worse than before. Just like the account of Luke 11, where a demon was cast out, and because nothing took its place, He returned with seven more worse than him. So let's let the Holy Spirit help us keep our garden free from weeds. That is to help us keep our life free from sin. Now, a word of caution. It's so much easier to see the weeds in someone else's garden than in our own. So let's be careful to remove the weeds of sin from our own lives before we start messing with someone else's garden. Jesus was very pointed in the statement about getting the log out of, his own, out of your own eye before we try to get a speck of dust from our brother's eye. And then as was read here in John 8, Jesus told the woman taken in adultery, let him that has no weeds, that is sin, cast the first stone. So as we start a new year, let's consider doing something about the weeds in our life. We all have them. I know what some of mine are, and I'm working on getting rid of them. Some of you may know that I, some that I have missed. I invite you to let me know. But please do it kindly. So to be more effective for our Lord and Savior, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to show us the weeds in our lives and help us pull them out. And let's allow the Holy Spirit to supply the best nutrients for our spiritual growth. Then we'll have an attractive garden drawing the unbeliever to Jesus through us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, while we're in this world, we will have weeds. We will have sins. They're the little sins. They're not the big ones necessarily. And they don't keep us from going to heaven. They don't affect our salvation, but Lord, again, they do affect the way others see us. And Lord, even this morning, I had a weed pointed out to me by one of our members. And so help us, help me to work on that and help us to work on our weeds. And while New Year's resolutions may be good, help us to keep in mind that it's only what we apply through the word of God that really makes a difference. So help us, Lord, to get rid of these weeds in our lives to be more attractive for you to others. Amen.